Warcraft Logs is a tool that allows you to compare your damage per second to others with the same class and the same spec as you. It's graded on a scale of 1 to 100, and you can use this tool to see how much damage you're doing while comparing it to other players to see if there's something you can do to improve. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Warcraft Logs so you can parse 99 in your raids. In order to log your raids, you're going to need to follow these four steps. First, download the client from the website, create an account, and log in. Second, make sure to download the add-on Logger Headlight from CurseForge. Third, make sure to enable advanced combat logging in your World of Warcraft settings. Fourth, in the Warcraft Logs uploader, drop down the window at the top and make sure it's selected for your version of WoW. In my case, I'm playing vanilla. In the Live tab, make sure to choose WoW, Classic Era, and then the Logs folder. Now, all you have to do is zone into a raid and hit go. This will upload your logs live as you are running them. Now that you can upload your own logs, let's break down how to read them. Okay guys, today we're gonna go over um, how to uh, compare your logs to someone else's to see what you can do better. Um, I like to open up two separate pages for WoW logs. Click on whichever version of the game you're playing. I'm playing Season of Discovery and we're doing the Nomergon raid. So you're gonna scroll down to rankings on the left one and filter it by whatever class you're playing. My main's a Fire Mage, so this will bring up the top 100 fire mages in the world right now and then i'll click on my mage right here and you can see that i'm parsing 99s but my damage on the first fight um if we filter by the first fight is actually way lower and the reason i have 99s is because i parsed 99 on february 20th and so if i were to do the same amount of damage today i wouldn't even be in like the top 200 um, so the time that you do your parse is very important as the damage starts to drastically go up when people figure out ways to do the fight better or they just get really lucky with crits. But what we're going to do is you're going to notice here that my group's kill times are on the 40 second mark and all the most of the people in the top 100 are having much faster kill times than me. So when I try to improve DPS, I try to find someone that's in the top 100 that's par uh, with like the same kill times as me as my group. So it's not like unreasonable. Now this guy has a 40 second kill time. So let's click on his and we'll click on my highest damage fight, which was 638. And let's click on the mage and click on the mage on me. Okay. So you can see our breakdown here. It actually looks like his pyroblasts are doing the most amount of damage. So he got five pyroblast crits and I got um, five pyroblast crits or four, four. I only got four. He got five and his fight was one second short one, their kill time was one second shorter so it looks like he got one more pyro blast proc than me um which could possibly be the only difference in the fight but let's let's break it down even farther to make sure he's casting one living flame um three living bombs 12 hits with the living bombs um sometimes your living bomb hits don't always register so maybe he's getting maybe he got a few more living bombs off than me he did his living bombs did 63 dps and mine only did 23. so this could be a big issue uh when i'm looking at my parse maybe my living bomb uptime just wasn't very good because the damage that his living bombs did was almost a hundred more than me so that's one area of the fight that i probably need to improve on is my living bomb uptime just by looking um at the tables and we're right now we're we're clicked right here at the tables and it's possible that my rotation could be off let's see the fireballs he did three fireballs i did two um and then he had his ignite damage was two point or six point eight percent uh six point six point eight k and mine's four k so he had more ignite damage and more pyroblast damage and more living bomb damage uh and his fireballs also crit a lot it looks like uh he had a hundred percent crits on his fireballs and none of mine crit i casted two and neither one of them crit so a little bit of rng with his fireballs and just all that equaled 850 damage versus my 638. so let's see here if there's anything else i can do to improve by clicking on the timelines we can look at the openers it looks like i was able to get damage on the boss at 1.5 seconds which is really good on this fight and he didn't get any damage in on the boss until three seconds so it looks like his opener was Scorch Living Bomb. And he got a Pyroblast proc off of that. So he would he immediately casted a Pyro. And I also got a Pyro off the beginning of this pull too. So we both got lucky and we proc'd Ignite. 
Anytime you crit, you proc ignite. If you get two, if you get two crits, you get a pyro instant pyroblast. Um, this is this is good. So it looks like our openers were pretty good. My opener might have been slightly better than his because I got damage in sooner. My all of my abilities are hitting the boss at five seconds, and his are hitting the boss at seven point eight. Getting a good opener is definitely a key to doing more damage on the boss. He casts his Living Flame around the 16 second mark. Right when I cast mine, I cast mine about the 15 second mark. So right now, things are going well for me. It looks like we're both going to be hitting Combust around this time. Um, and he is going to be casting Fireballs in his Combust window. So we're both doing five stacks of Scorch, 100% uptime on Living Bomb, and then Fireball in the Combustion window. It's just that his are critting and mine are not so fire mage is a lot of rng but this is a good way to see if you're doing your openers the same as guys that are parsing above you uh now instead of looking at my logs because i should be doing the right opener because and then a f fitting a fire blast in right at the end and we both do that right at the end of the fight i mean honestly these two logs look identical it seems like he just got a little bit luckier with crits than i did and was able to fit more damage into his window and he also refreshed his living bomb uh when i forgot to refresh my living bomb so that was the major difference this fight that i learned is that maybe maybe i cast a living bomb and it missed or maybe i just totally forgot to cast it all together and that was a big difference in my damage could have affected my crits because every time a living bomb ticks it has a chance to crit um and so going over your logs like this and realizing that oh i forgot to recast living bomb kind of triggers in your head like okay maybe i won't make that mistake next time other than that if all of my abilities just crit i probably would have done the same same amount of damage as this guy had i recasted that living bomb so that's nice to know that i'm not doing anything wrong on the first boss i just got to get luckier um now let's take a look at somebody else okay this one was sent in to me by one of my viewers peanut butter um and he was asking how to get his dps up so we're just basically going to go over a 100 parsing hunter and the difference between peanut butter's logs and zataras uh let's pick a single target fight where he's low on like maybe electrocutioner or crowd pummeler i like to do crowd pummeler personally because you can have a hundred percent uptime on crowd pummeler there's no mechanics that like take you out of the fight you should have a hundred percent uptime on crowd pummeler where like electrocutioner your group might be doing a mechanic that like takes you out of the fight so essentially crowd pummeler is just a target dummy uh and you occasionally have to move out of the way of some cog wheels but that doesn't prevent you from doing damage you can literally just kind of circle him so let's go to crowd pummeler and this is i think this is a good fight to see uh to compare numbers uh, it looks like your highest damage fight was 293 and his is 695. So we'll click on to Zatara here and Peanut Butter on this one. And let's take a look at just the overall breakdown here. Um, it looks like he's using a different pet than you. He's using Flanking Strike and he's even getting some Shadow Bolt procs here. Uh, he's getting mech dragon's breath chili arcano shredder prox occasionally he's casting a multi-shot and a wing clip okay and you're also doing he's doing he's doing five wing clips you're doing 13 he's you're doing nine flanking strikes he's doing six um he has dismantle on his weapon on, on his doing 2k damage your dismantle is doing 1.2k so he just he probably had he had 17 procs so he got luckier with the dismantle procs than you did your fight is a lot longer than his um so it's it's tough to compare you know a 40 second fight to a 130 but in this case we'll go ahead and do it so it's looking like overall um your melees are doing 5k damage over a longer period of time and his melees are doing 12k damage in half the amount of time um I see 57 hits here for melee and you have 86 hits for on melee um with roughly twice the amount of time your average melee hit is 90 and his average melee hit is 221. so a lot of times with melee if you're just auto attacking this can be gear and group comp the other the other abilities uh for non for for melee um like you're if you're a melee and you're looking at straight up abilities like how many times 
he's casting you know raptor strike is his two abilities that are top damage and that's yours as well so you do you're doing 5.3k raptor and 3.9k um number of casts is 34 and he's got 16 his average hit is 345 yours is 176. right now it looks like you're doing pretty good with the rotation um i'm not sure what shadow bolt fire shield and mechatorx arcano shredder dragon's breath chili is something that he's doing like an additional thing that he's throwing in there to get a squeeze out a little bit more damage but i mean all of this little bitty stuff he's doing here is legit 1k damage um it's not make or breaking the damage meter for him i mean this little stuff he's doing is putting him from like 99 to like the 100 category so i wouldn't pay attention to this little stuff too much the major damage right here the major issue is his melees are just doing way more damage than yours um and let's take a look at why he's doing that let's look at the timelines really fast to see what your opener is um it looks like he's actually just opening with a multi-shot um at the start of the pool and then he's running in there and and then immediately going into the raptor strikes and raptor strike flanking raptor flanking flanking raptor flanking raptor and all this other stuff is prox so i mean the melee rotation for hunter doesn't look too complicated it looks like you're just spamming raptor strike and flanking strike on cd um so i don't think there's too much more you can do as a melee hunter to improve besides just make sure you have 100 percent uptime when you're hitting the boss and maybe use a different pet um depending on the fight it looks like he's using the lightning breath pet on this fight in order to parse because this boss has pretty high armor so i imagine that your um your pet is just not doing as much damage as his is because this this boss has high armor so let's take a look at the group comp as well as your all's gear tables okay so the group comp he has in his group a feral druid to provide wind fury a warrior to provide a battle shout and a marksman hunter to provide true shot aura these three players excuse me these three specs and these three classes in your group are going to provide you with more damage having the right comp is a big part of parsing for melee damage if you go in without this you have no feral druid in your group you have no warrior and you have no marksman hunter to provide you with true shot or so you're automatically going to be at a three buff disadvantage when it comes to uh this other group and he's actually a fury warrior which he he has a boosted battle shout providing melee with more damage um uh, of course you you are the hunter so you should have somebody that's running um he does have the other hunter might be running lion so that frees up a slot for him to get like something a, a different rune he doesn't have to run lion because the other hunter is running it so this raid is kind of set up for zatara and uh, zatara to parse essentially so just having the right classes in your group is a big part of it now let's check out the gear difference uh especially the weapons he's using the epic weapon uh mechanotorx arcano shredder and you are using the protector sword and the vanquisher sword this is a 2.7 speed weapon 29 dps He's using a 2.6 speed weapon with 34 DPS. Oh, and this weapon has an extra proc on it, which was providing him with extra damage during the fight called Mechanotorx Arcano Shredder. It's a weapon, and that was giving him 1% of his damage, just an extra, you know, 350 damage or so um, that he, he's doing per fight. Bloodlash Bow, you guys both have that. Um, you both have decent protect protectors bands are good. Um, I wouldn't say that y'all's damage, like y'all's gear is that far off. So it looks like the majority he's probably just using all tiger gear, is what it looks like. Yeah, he's pretty much just using full tiger gear and a little bit of hit. 
Um, he's getting the hit from the neck. No, it's crit from the neck. He's getting hit from the helmet. Um, he's getting hit from the two set. He's getting hit from the gloves. And plus attack power with mechanical units. Um, so he's running, you know, around 3% hit or so on, on, his, um, on his build. And so making sure you have that 3% hit is probably going to be your first priority. I see you have hit on your belt and your uh, helmet and you have the two sets. So you do have the 3% hit. Honestly, I feel like with your gear, if you have those other three people in your group with buffs, that's probably going to raise your DPS at least 100. Um, and then just making sure that you have really good uptime and the proper group and probably that main hand weapon will bring your DPS up just ever so slightly. The biggest issue is the feral droid with no with no wind fury. You're not have like he's just going to do so much more damage than you without wind fury. To be honest, if I was playing melee hunter, I probably wouldn't even run in a group without without a a feral druid just because of how much damage it is and if you can get a warrior in there um you know and another marksman hunter that's just bonus but the feral druid is pretty much required for all melee right now uh wind fury just provides too much damage so i hope that um this helps you out bud it's not necessarily your gear i feel like you could be parsing a lot higher with your gear at least at least the blue and orange range um if you have 100% uptime on the boss, you're hitting your abilities on cooldown and you're using the right pet based on the fight. Um, other than that, bro, I think you're doing a, a decent job and there's nothing nothing uh, to be ashamed about or anything like that. It's, uh, it's mainly group comp and kill times is going to be what I see that you're doing wrong here. All right, guys, if you enjoyed today's lesson on, the war on how to use Warcraft logs, please subscribe to the channel. <sighs> All right, guys, I hope this helped you uh, break down a few different types of Warcraft. Okay, and that about wraps it up. I hope this helped you uh, understand Warcraft logs and be a little bit less intimidated by them. They're a great tool um, to see if you can help others do more DPS. A lot of people see, view Warcraft logs negatively uh, because it, uh, it, it can create an environment of elitism. Um, but if you look at it as a tool where you can help others get better, um, I think it can be used for good. So I really like WoW Logs. And if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the channel. I'm live every day at 5 p.m. at twitch.tv slash Sardako. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll see you then. Peace.